Iquisolaske was a Pleistocene species of horse, now extinct, that inhabited North America. This species is primarily known from fossils in Alaska, thus its scientific name. However, it has also been found all the way down to Mexico, and is in fact the most common Pleistocene horse in the southwest of the United States. But it was not the only one in North America. In fact, it was far from it during the time period. It is believed to have coexisted alongside many of the species of horse such as Equus scotti, the giant horse, Equus neoborensis, the Yukon horse, the western horse, Equus simplicidens, a disputed species, Beringian populations of Equus ferus ferus or the tarpan, and species of Hipparion, among, again, many others, including one species of Harrington hippus. H. Francisci, and possibly the onager, which may have been Equus conversitus earlier. This species was stout and stocky, medium to small sized, around the dimensions of a modern day cow pony. While true for its closest living relatives and some other species of the time, some coexisting species like the western horse could get much larger to the size of a mustang, and the giant horse could get even larger than that. Throughout its range, one of the primary predators of the species was the American lion, Panthera trox, but the Beringian cave lion also filled this role in the Alaskan portion of its range. Saber-toothed cats such as Smilodon and Homotherium were also major predators for horses like Equus alaskae. The giant short-faced bears were also likely predators for horses, including Eolaskae. And in what is now the lower 48 of the United States, the lesser short faced bear was also a likely predator alongside its big cousin. Dire wolves were likely predators in the southern part of the horse's range. And with recent evidence as of 2020 that they appear to have been in Beringia, due to a recent Asian skull, they probably would have been present in Alaska as a predator for horses. Beringian wolves, an extinct type of grey wolf larger than wolves today, was also a likely predator of the Alaskan horse. After their extinction, modern Alaskan wolves moved in and were not descended from them, but they would also be predators of horses. Grizzly bears were also likely major predators in Beringia for the Alaskan horse, and 13,000 years ago, it expanded into much of North America where it possibly replaced both short-faced bears as predators. Some distinct skulls in Beringia and Alaska were proposed by some of the possible tigers. Tigers did reach eastern Beringia in Siberia, so it's not unlikely that they could have entered Alaska. If so, they would have been predators, and an early predator would have been Casmoporphites, a wolf-like hyena that lived in North America. Humans were in the Alaskan horses' range towards the end, and had been hunting other horse species throughout their shared ranges. It is not unlikely that horse species would be on the menu of hunter-gatherer tribes in this region. Records indicate that Eolaske had a multi-seasonal presence in the same region as other horse species like Eolande, the Yukon horse. Their social structure and behavior were also likely similar. Family herds would include 4 to 10 females with a young and an adult male known as a stallion. Other males were gathered in less socially stable bachelor herds and consist from groups of 2 to 4 individuals. These two types of herds did not often share territories. They would possibly give birth to typically one foal like modern Shervalsky's horses to their closest living relatives. Stallions both play fight and in cases where they were challenged or hunted, seriously fight opponents. Their closest analog would be Shervalsky's horses in Central Asia. Another close analog would be the Eurasian wild horses, the aforementioned Tarpan, which the last scientifically confirmed one died in 1879 no possible hybrids with parentage of this taxon survived until 1909. Extinction Equus Alaska went extinct between 13,000 and 9,000 years ago throughout its range. This included several other species, and the general scientific consensus is that horses in general began to die off around this time frame on the continent, along with mammoths, mastodons, short faced bears, and pretty much other Ice Age megafauna. Many theories have been put out about possible causes for this extinction event, 
ranging from climate change during the early Holocene after the last glacial maximum at the end of the Pleistocene. A common impact proponents claim caused the end of the last ice age. The replacement of much of its steppe habitat with forests. Out competition with animals that could live in the new habitat. And a hunting spree by the nomadic tribes. Though all of these views have been criticized to some extent, is some of the subject of many flame wars online. The Alaskan horse, regardless of these theories, is gone today. Now its closest analog in North America would be the Mustang, which has since replaced much of its range throughout North America. However, the calls for introducing Shavosky's horses to replace extinct horses like the Alaskan have been made. One wonders if such a plan would displace free-roaming animals in the areas such as Mustangs, who are living in the former range. The coexistence of several horse or equid species in the same areas during the Pleistocene prior to the extinctions indicate that such a change would not disrupt existing equines. Mustangs and other free-roaming equines may not be severely affected, possibly. Alternatively, cloning has been suggested for extinct horses like Yukon horses and Alaska horses. The news of a very well-preserved Ice Age foal with liquid blood and DNA, as well as the news of a Shavalsky's horse clone cloned from a decades-old individual, further excites the possibility of cloning extinct horses. It is now a possibility, and rewilding proponents consider it something. Not only does this call into question what would happen to existing herds of equines living in the area, but it also brings in the general ethical questions about cloning, which tend to come every time this kind of thing has been suggested. Until then, the Mustang fills the niche of the ancient horses and their closest relatives surviving the steppes of Central Asia and in captivity around the world.